I want to touch on that, that MasterCard spending pulse data in just for a second. Um, it it kind of spells out that consumers are still winning, still willing to spend on discretionary things, airline tickets, um, going out to eat. What does that tell you about the consumer that we keep saying is stretched and, and maybe pulled a little bit too far? I do still think they're stretched. Everybody still wants to go have fun. I think we're still having a little PTSD from the pandemic era. But at some point, you've got student loans coming back on, which the Fed did flag as a potential risk, as well as you have to pay your rent. Everybody still wants to go out to eat, wants to spend on services. Some of that's just it's costing more. And, and so some of the spending is going up, not necessarily because we're getting more goods for what we're spending, but also inflation's pressuring some of that with higher gasoline prices and, and, and higher cost of food. Right. Look at the futures right now. Uh, solidly in the green. Looks like the Dow is going to open up uh, 100 points higher right now. Uh, markets also on a bit of a winning streak. With that in mind, we also have the CPI report coming up later today. Do you expect that to be a market mover or... With so much Fed speak out there, do you think investors are more focused on that? Uh, absolutely. CPI is historically a market mover, especially in the bond market as well as equities. But when you look at PPI coming in so hot yesterday, and I know we're looking for, for kind of 3.3 month to month, 3.6, and, and moderated numbers, but they're going to be sticky if it's 0.3 month to month, which is expected. Some are putting it at 0.4 if you look at Cleveland Fed. You're going to have some problems there with that's a 3.6, 3.8 annualized rate. That's still too high. So I'm a little worried it might come in a little hot and derail this just because what PPI came in yesterday, right. that was a pretty big shocking number. All right. So with that worry in mind, Vicky, I don't know you to be worried very often, but with that worry in mind, what is your WEX word of the day? My WEX word of the day today is epic. And I'm thinking like geologic time. Remember, you had like eras, eons and epics. The Fed finally acknowledged they had the balance risk. So I'm calling this as a new era, a new epic in the world that the Fed is moving to pause from higher. Everybody's starting to talk about we may be at peak rates. Fed speak has been a little bit more dovish that we might be here. And, and, it, and that with what you have geopolitically going on right now, I think we have moved into the epic of the Fed pause. A Fed pause. So you have a lot of confidence in that. So I'm assuming you think in a Fed pause would give a boost to the markets. It should. I mean, historically, they last about 10 months before the, the cut. And so I do think you could see an uplift here through the end, see your Santa Claus out rally, your end rally. You've got technicals that are really supportive of the market. 200-day moving average held nicely, 4,200 held nicely. And the market has, has absolutely ignored macro and geopolitical risks for the last two years. Mm -hmm. So even though this is such a tragic period we're in right now, the market has shown resiliency and ability to climb this wall of worry. And so we think it could actually Actually, rally out your end. All right, worried about that wall of worry. I want to bounce something else off of you. A year ago today, we, the markets, uh, the S&P hit 35.77. We've bounced more than 20% since then. Um, we also got a new note from Fundstrat overnight. They actually talk about another bounce for this October. They say this week's advance managed to exceed former August lows at 43.36 and has done so on an expansion of breath. Structurally, this is a very good sign and goes a long ways towards thinking. The lows for October were made last Tuesday. In this case, they're referencing October the 3rd. Do you think that we found a level of support at 43.36 and even if it's not a big rally, we're going to move upside from here. You could, absolutely. And short of a bad event, which I will point out, October does not have a good reputation. There have been multiple horrible events in October that have derailed nice market rallies in the past. But right now, all points show that it could absolutely rally back to the 4,600. I think they've got a, what, 4,825 year end target. Oppenheimer's at 4,900. You got a lot of people out there that see a little legs to this market. All right. I want to get to your picks right now. Both of your picks report their earnings tomorrow. We're talking JP Morgan and United Health. Why would you buy these stocks today? Okay, first off, who doesn't like J.P. Morgan? Of the financials, they're the strongest out there. I see that they're, what they've done with First Republic, it's supposed to add to their balance sheet. Jamie Dimon's a fantastic CEO. I think if you're looking at financials, you want the safest port in the storm. Absolutely, hands down, J.P. Morgan. United Health historically, Q3 has been really, really good for them. They typically provide their 2024 guidance, and at last six of eight Q3s, they've outperformed the S&P 500 handily. And so I look at United Health. I think the the cost pressures that they seen are priced in. I love Optum, Optum RX. They've got great positioning in both the private sector as well as Medicare Advantage and less exposure to Medicaid. Of all the managed care options out there, they're extremely strong. And Q3 has historically been a very good release for them.